This video is to help you complete the 7-1 work together. For this one we are creating an income statement for the company of Darlene's Delivery Service for the month ended July 31st of the current year. And we are given part of our worksheet here. We have the income statement and balance sheet columns that we are going to use to create this. We begin by filling out the heading and we put the company name first, which was Darlene's Delivery Service. Next we put the name of the document. And this is our income statement, so we write that in. Next we put in the date, and the date on this is July 31st of the current year, so we put in for month ended, and then we put in the current month, and date, and year. Now our income statement is going to be split into two categories, but basically we have three sections. We have revenue, expenses, and then net income or net loss. Those titles are placed right against the margin of our income statement, and then the information that goes under them is indented just a small bit. So our first one is revenue, and it's going to go on the top line. Now notice this very top line is just kind of a title bar. It's blank. It doesn't have any columns for us to write in. So we're going to skip that first one and actually go to the second line and we put in the side he heading of revenue and a colon. Then we are going to list all of our revenue accounts. The only revenue account we have is sales. So we're going to put sales and notice that is indented just a little bit. And then the amount of sales, we have two columns. We have one column to record a listing of numbers and then a second column that will have the totals. Now we want to put every item for each category in the first column and then the total over here, but we only have one account, so we're just going to carry that total all the way over to the second column. And for this one our total is 5511, and then don't forget to put the dash there uh, for our cents on this one. Then we put our next side heading, which is expenses, and that goes all the way against the margin. And then we're going to list our expense accounts. And because we have more than one, we are going to be creating a total. So we're going to write the amount in the first column here. All right, once we've written all of them down, whoops, I need to put this last amount in here, 713, then we're going to draw a single line underneath this first column, and we're going to total those numbers using our calculator. And our total is going to go in the next column over. Now notice this total does match the total that is right here at the bottom of this income statement column. But you always want to double check your math to make sure you didn't record something wrong. Now on this line we are going to write total expenses. Then we have our last side heading, which is 
either net income or net loss. And for this one we had net income. It goes back against the margin. And we're going to come here and put a single rule under the second column. Then the formula to calculate net income is revenue minus expenses. So we're going to take this total minus this total. And we should get 3,330. And this number should match the net income on this line if we have not done any of our math wrong. And if our math looks correct, we are going to double rule under both of these columns to state that we know that there are no mistakes in either column based on our math that we came up with. And then our last step to finish this document is to figure our component percentages. We have this percent of sales column. So what we're going to do is compare everything against sales. So if I compare sales and divide it by sales, I get 100%. And we round to the nearest tenth, so it would be 100.0. Then we come here and we take 2181 divided by sales, 5511 equals, and I get 39, or 0.3957539. Now we want percentages, so we have to move the decimal over twice. So I get 39.5, but that's a 7, so I need to round, so I get 39.6. And we write that here. Then we do the same thing with our net income. We take 3330 divided by 5511, and I get 0.604246. We move the decimal over two places to the right, and that gives us 6.0.4. Six, and the next one number after a 4 is a 2, so we don't have to round. And we, so we just do uh, 60.4. Now, we can tell if we did our component percentages right if these two numbers added together equals 100%. So we can run that through our calculator. 39.6 plus 60.4 equals 100. So our component percentages are correct. All right, you guys go ahead and do the on your own using the same uh, steps, using the same steps that we just used on this document right here.